Hi, and welcome to workshop six. I'm going to be doing demonstration 20, which is an exploratory factor analysis demonstration today. Um, in this particular demonstration, we're going to be using a data set from a sample of um, taken from children that have been taken the WISC, the Wexler Intelligence Scale for Children. The source for this is the Schumacher and Lomax Beginner's Guide to Structural Equation Modeling, 4th edition, Chapter 6. The file is WISC.txt. There are the names of the variables. And let me get this up here. I have created a Word document that has these in them. Let me move this over. Okay, so I'll put this Word file in Canvas. This identifies where the file, um, how, where it was uh, downloaded, and this also contains a, some information on what each of these measures refer to. So the ref we see that we have quite a few measures, and um, we're going to use this file to run an exploratory factor analysis. Now, as I mentioned before, exploratory factor analysis is used as a dimension reduction technique. It is absolutely is exploratory. Um, you, it doesn't make sense to use a exploratory factor analysis without a confirmatory factor analysis as well. And typically you have separate samples um, because you need to have the additional evidence of the model fit, uh, if the model fits the data appropriately. Um, when you, one of the great things about running an EFA in M plus is that you do get the model fit information um, that you would even if you were running a CFA. And you can compare models based on not just the factor structure, but you can pair, compare them compare them based on model fit as well. I'm just going to point these features out. Um, this again, this topic is so I immense um, that it's difficult to do just a short little um, uh, workshop on it. But let me go through this um, syntax. So starting here, this is the data file and the names of the variables. And these are the variables we're going to be using. Now, I, there are no missing values in this data set. Otherwise, I would have had some sort of missing statement. I do have um, the option here. Well, this is something that I do not want. <laughs> a stickler I like to have um, all caps for my main statements okay um, then I want to do type equals basic first so I'm going to go ahead and run that before I go on to the other steps all right so I'm going to save and run now in type equals basic it gives me my means it gives me my correlations between the variables and it also gives me all of my uh, descriptive statistics. So we can see what these variables look like. And all right, so now I'm going to go back to my INP file and I'm going to omit this type equals basic. Oh, I might stop here just for a second and just mention that if you want to, th there is a certain aspect of exploratory factor analysis where you want to look at the correlation matrix um, to be able to see if you if the variables are correlated if they if they have followed different patterns, but that's good to see to know your data. But it's not necessary to uh, for an analysis. It's more just that you would learn your data more um, once you start the analysis. Of course, the computer program does that for you. There are some basic statistics that are provided in EFA, but not the correlation matrix. Okay, so now I'm going to run uh, type equals EFA, EFA for exploratory factor analysis. And I am saying the minimum number of um, factors to extract is one and the maximum is three. At this point in time, I don't know anything about it. I'm going to uh, comment out the rotation. The default rotation is oblique geomin and I'm just going to be okay with that and then if I put plot equals uh, plot type equals plot 2 that's going to give me my eigenvalue scree plot. Okay, so let's run this 
Now let's first let's look at the scree plot. All right, so that's something that if you have run uh, exploratory factor analysis before, you um, have probably uh, looked at scree plots. It's a bit uncertain because you usually are saying, you know, right at the elbow, it appears that it may be two factors are would be the best. Um, you know, possibly more, but it really looks like one, two factors, and then it makes a big change. Uh, so that's one of the criteria is to have two fact to, to look at where the elbow is in the scree plot. Another criteria for understanding how many factors to extract is the number of eigenvalues that are greater than one. And I'm going to close this and look at the output. And here we see the eigenvalues. So you can see there are three eigenvalues greater than one. And so it's possible that you might want to extract three factors. Um, M plus also provides model fit for these models. And you can see, you can use some of the techniques I've talked about before, comparing chi-square um, from one model to the next to see if a model fits properly. We do actually see, interestingly enough, that the three-factor model has a non-significant p-value which um, I mentioned in, in prior workshops that if the chi-square is not significant, that means that there's no particular, there's no uh, significant difference between the model implied covariance matrix and the data covariance matrix. So that means there's good model fit. But as you have larger and larger sample sizes, it's, it's less uh, of a chance that that will occur. So um, in most cases, the chi-square uh, statistic is not used as sort of an um, absolute criteria for whether or not the, the model is a good fit for the data. All right, so kind of looking through all of that, the eigenvalues, we get down to here, we see some of the information criteria, the chi-square again here. Um, you see that is that one factor model because the first one we're going through is here's the output for the one factor model. So we'll see all of that information. Um, and then you'll see the geomin rotated loadings. Okay, let me stop for a minute and talk about rotation. Um, the default rotation is oblique geomin. There are a lot of different types of rotation techniques. But the two main categories are orthogonal and oblique. Orthogonal means that you think that, you believe that your factors that you're extracting are completely uncorrelated with one another. And in social sciences, it's, it, that is a pretty unrealistic uh, choice because, or a, a, definitely a, a very unrealistic assumption because one of the reasons you are probably collecting data from these items is because you think these items are very uh, important to a particular construct, which is the theory you're studying, and, and you probably think that these items are correlated. And if they are determined by latent traits, then those probably those latent traits are correlated. Um, so um, a, any type of factor um, rotation that is Orthogonal is not really, uh, doesn't really make sense in social sciences. So, um, the, like I said, the default rotation is oblique geomin. If I say nothing, it will do that, and that's what we had in this particular case. Oh, let me, I apologize, I'm going back and forth here. But again, once you get the summary of the analysis, you should read through and look. It's 175 is definitely correct, the number of observations, number of dependent variables. Uh, estimators, maximum likelihood. This is different than what you see. There are a lot of choices, um, but in um, SPSS, we use a uh, principal axis factoring, or you could also use principal components analysis. Or and so, and I think even maximum likelihood is a chance is an option there. But um, for continuous variables, maximum likely is a uh, a good uh, estimator to use. And you have convergence criteria and number of random starts, maximum number of iterations. All of these in the rotation algorithm, all of these are 
uh, features that can be changed. There are defaults and then there are ways to override it. So certainly to think about that when you're running your, your um, analysis. Okay, so we got down to the first factor. Those are the fit criteria. These are the, the loadings. These are the rotated loadings. And the residual variances. These are the standard errors. And these are the estimates over the standard errors as well. Then we get to the, the two-factor solution. Now these are the geo and rotated loadings, the standard errors, and the estimates of the standard errors. And the factor structure. Now the reason we need the factor structure, and this is something new in the two-factor uh, solution, is because now you have factors and you have um, correlations among the factors. Uh, where are they? Here they are. So those are the geomin, geomin factor correlations. So the factor 1 and 2, they are correlated at 0.136. And because they are correlated, then it's not just the loadings that we are interested in. We are also interested, they were interested in the product of the loadings and, and the correlation. Um, so the factor structure is, is, it's not exactly that, but it's close to that. Um, and um, again, I just recommend you pick up a book like uh, the McCoach and et al. book on instrument design. And it'll explain all of these features very carefully. Um, all right, so we're going to go all the way down. And now at the end, you'll see the three-factor solution. And so now let's try one more thing. And that is... Let's change the technique here and let's say uh, instead of one, let me choose one to three, I'm going to actually just do two. The min or max is, is two. I'm also going to output my modification indices. This tells me um, some of the, whether the errors are correlated with one another. Um, and that is a problem if errors are correlated, but it, it also, there are, there are ways to work with that. Um, and I'm also going to change my rotation to Uplemin. All right, so I'm going to save and run. And so I'm not showing a comparison. I'm already 12 minutes into this video, so I don't want to go into too much detail. Uh, but here we have Uplemin rotated loadings and factor structure, and we only have the two because that's we're just used doing a two-factor structure. Let me take a minute and look at this. Um, we can see that we have for the first info comp or arithmetic similarities in vocab. We have those are pretty have pretty high loadings, and even digits is pretty high. And now down here we have lower loadings here and higher loadings. And then we also have this third coding doesn't really work with either of them. So we may actually want to remove it. But those are the types of things, and I'm going over it very quickly, but those are the types of things that you would need to look at when you're making a decision about whether particular items seem to make sense um, to load on different factors. So for example, if you collected another sample, you might want to do a confirmatory factor analysis, which you would call factor one something, give it a name, maybe, and, and then you might say then Y is determined by these first five or six um, factor, or I'm sorry, indicator variables. And, um, and then you may say X is determined by these four, and you may want to throw the coding out because it doesn't load on either one of those. Um, and that would be uh, something that you could then test the model fit for that uh, CFA measurement model. Um, there are a lot of other features for uh, EFA. Um, like I said, uh, you can change any of these default values in the rotation algorithm. You can also change the estimator to some other types. If you have um, non-continuous values for either your dependent or independent variables. You need to study a little bit about that to make sure that you are handling it correctly. Um, all right, um, that's it for demonstration 20.
and I'll see you during demonstration 21.